Yeah, I, I think that's all the problem districts are at large, yeah. Yeah, they're at large. All at large, and you get like a supervisor and, and or a chairperson and two supervisors, a treasurer and a clerk. Mm -hmm. yeah. So regardless of the size. Tom Morris has a treasurer and clerk combined, by the way, regardless. Yeah. yeah. So the only municipalities that this would enter into would be Ashland and uh, what, Mellon, maybe? City of Mellon and Village of Butternut, maybe? Yeah, the Village of Butternut has 300 people on their supervisor list. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they have six supervisors, a clerk, yeah. a president. For the village. For the village, with 300 and some people. But that doesn't matter because they, they vote at large. Yeah. Too, so the only places this really affects is, is clerks in townships who have to have wards. And that's always been a contentious issue because like Peaksville had two wards and, and the village had two wards for county races only. And it always kind of made the clerks have to figure out, okay, where exactly do you live? Oh, on that side of the street, you get this ballot. <laughs> it, it's a nightmare for them. But we have a question. The three, is the 300 uh, minimum, is, is that a requirement or is that a recommendation? It, it's a statute. It says wards do not have to be equal in population. However, they are subject to the population limit set forth in statute 5.15 2B, which is the sentence I read off that um, a city, village, or town less than 10,000 must have at least uh, 300, no more than 1,000 in a ward. I was going to say, Peaksville had two wards, and they only have uh, 125 people in the whole town, so I don't... <laughs> yeah. So, again, if we don't follow the statutes, the, the towns are just liable to get sued if somebody wanted to press charges. I think we have to look at the definition of municipality there. And that falls under the statutes for municipality, and I don't know that the towns are listed as municipalities for such. Right. Uh, so I, I really, and then the next thing you look at is, okay, there's a statute that says thou shall not, but is there a penalty section? There may not even be a penalty for it. Right. Um, so. Yep. It's just, um, so I'm just kind of putting it as guidelines because the municipalities should follow it, um, but it, 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 that's in their court, really. Right. Um, the reason I bring that up is because I would like to discuss that split later at some point. Yeah. And the town of Jingles. <laughs> well, go ahead. And the Marty. island. Marty, go ahead and what's your... Let's talk about it now. Oh, okay. Well, the, the, the whole 18 and 19, or 16 and 18, those 16, 17 and 18, there's enough people in that group from, from, from the ages. Yeah, 17, no, no. these three, there's enough people to form three districts. And the city, taking out the city of Mellon, which is six, seven hundred, uh, that leaves plenty of people to to populate two districts. So, the, the, I talked to people in the town of Ashton and a couple of supervisors in the town of Ashton, and they don't think that's a very good idea to split the town. And the, an alternate solution would be to take uh, the town of Ringo, and I think somebody at the last meeting said that the town of Ringo historically has been partnered with the town of Morris. Morris, yes. And if you if you make a split about right here somewhere in here, that that works out. Correct. So I did try that and you're right. Uh, um, the split would have to be one sixty nine. So like south of one sixty nine, all of Morris below that yeah. would have to go to Marengo. Yeah. 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 So what's wrong with that? I mean that that's the least disruption. This is gonna this is gonna Disrupt things considerably. Yeah, right. So <laughs> I was trying to How keep would it. Would that then? If you went on 169 as the as the boundary, so it would be a horseshoe. It would wrap around. They would touch on the bottom, the yeah. two towns. Yeah, this, you can't see it, but it's, it, yeah, it's, it's right here. Yeah. yeah. Can you make the picture bigger on that so, screen? So, so are you you saying 
Ringo would wrap around as a horseshoe? Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mellon would be itself. Yep. Right. Yeah. City of Mellon. Yeah. Okay. And then you're saying 16, which is Meringo, yep. would then go swing through Morse and up? And up. Actually, yep. eight, 18 is about Meringo right now. Okay. So if we left it just as it is and not confuse things. If we, if we left the town of Meringo as, as, as 18, all the way across the bottom of town of Morse, up 169, that's the number we're going. Okay. So I, I guess I'm. So there are. In the little uh, ward that is 16 in the town of Ashland right now, there are 300 people. Yeah. So, does what is the number for the town of Ashland? Does anybody have that handy? You want anything to turn it off? 424. Oh, excuse me, 582. 582. So you'd be slightly under, because I think six. 680 is kind of a cutoff there. So you'd need 100 100 people from somewhere for the town of Ashton to be its own district. Yes, so the the other 100 people come from this corner of the town of Ashton. Oh, correct. Right, right. So, Matthew Marty, on 18 as it is right now, it goes down into the town of Gordon? No. The one I'm looking at yeah, is, uh, this one is all the way down to 77. Are you looking at the 2010 district? I think no. you are. So the current district yeah. that you guys are. So do we, are you suggesting that that line be cut in the town of Gordon? And then that, that, that the town of Gordon goes all the way over. So the town of Jacobs would stay 18, but then that portion, what, what becomes of the portion of 18, the southern portion? I think Marty's saying leave, like it's on the screen, I think Marty's saying leave the new 19 as it is and mm-hmm. just change 16 and 18. Yeah, but there, there, we don't need to go outside of those three, three districts at all to get the right numbers. And that's the way um, Town of Ringo was divided in 1992. It was shared with the Town of Morris. It didn't go all the way down to the end of the county. How many people would we have in 19 in the southern part there? The... Um, the new 19 is Gordon and Jacobs. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna refresh, it looks like we lost our table. Uh, new 19 has 777. Okay. Can you give me the number again? 777. So Marty, and you're your discussion there with making that Meringo that horseshoe shaped district. Uh-huh. Um, the town of Morris would have then two wards? Right. Okay. Okay, but then everybody south of that would go back to one ward, right? Like Peaksville would have one. Right now, Peaksville has one, Jacobs has two. Uh, Shannon Golden has one, Chippewa has one, okay. Jen has one, Village is two. Well, okay, but in the village, let me interrupt Marty for a second. In the village, you're talking that west side of 13. Mm-hmm. There are not, we talked about that last thing, there aren't. Is there six people? No, well, there's actually four, but there's a few more residents. It's those three boxes right there. I think there's 75, roughly, 75 to 100. I, but so if, if we take away that, then we have, then District 20, that is Chippewa and Shanna Golden, loses too many numbers, and, we, and I don't know where to pull numbers from. 
But how far under would that Chippewa Chan of Golden be then? Right now, as it stands, they're at nine percent, negative nine percent. Negative. Okay. So, okay. yeah. And, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. My contention is it, it makes a clerk's life easier not to have to deal with these wards. Right. But so that brings Jacobs to be awarded then. Correct. Yep. What did you say, Heather? Jacobs would be awarded. It would be split between two wards. Yeah. See, I mean, Peaksville, I mean, some. Yeah. It's going to have to be split. There's going to be that are going to have to be awarded. Right. Regardless. And if they're not awarded right now, it's going to be a big adjustment to those clerks to bring them to be awarded. Whereas Peaksville already is there are ways right. to know the process. Peaksville only has 141 well, people. Well, then, so. then that's my question. Is Peaksville, in this scenario, one ward? One ward. What if you go back to two and then give that village one? Uh, Not enough people? I could, I could see... If we took Peaksville and made it District 20, the green, then we might be able to make the village all purple, 21. So you take all of Peaksville and put it in? To with, the green. With Shanna Golden? With Shanna Golden. In Chippewa, yeah. In Chippewa. Was oh. that, does that stay within that 10%? I, I did not mess around oh. with that, so I don't have estimates. Oh. Um, just knowing that the town of uh, Peaksville is 141, and then that butternut is roughly 100, it might balance out. So would you go with the whole town of Peaksville, going with the town of Shannon Golden then? Because that's what you're talking about. Correct, right? right. What would that give us for the numbers? That would be some pretty simple lines. I think I think it would be I think it would fit. So that would eliminate the the village having one ward instead of two and Peaksville having one ward instead of two. Well the vill uh, the the village would lose one ward so they'd go down to, to one, one single and then Peaksville is already one single ward right now. Today in Today to it's two. Two, right. right. But so you'd have two that would both go back to one. Yes. What becomes of the town of Jacobs? The under that under the plan of combining Peaksville and Shannon Gold. It would still be two. Okay. Yep. Because we'd be trading Peaksville for that uh, west side of the village, essentially. And then to go back to Marty, point back up in, in that Moringo area. Um, so, so it'd be Moringo, south side of Morse, back up to 169. Yep. Yeah, that, that's what like you were talking before. There's that already has put an there. Right. And, and the town is geared to that. Okay. And then. The town of Ashland plus Morse north of 169 would be a district. Right. Okay. And you said it used to be that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because the two corners are touching, so you can say they're back to back. Right. Okay. We lose some of the. Um, togetherness like spatially together, but it is still contiguous, so it's still legal. Yeah. What if we took the town of Gordon and combined it with the town of Jacobs? Isn't that under that plan where, you know, you got Peaksville and Shannon Golden, and then that portion of the town of Jacobs, the town of Gordon, you got like that, would, would, the, would we have to dip down to, 
No. In Talmud Jacobs, does that um, 19 include all of Glidden? Or is Glidden split? Gl it is all of Glidden. It goes out to, I think it's Kemp Road and Blemel. Okay. So that's kind of the outer skirts. I just would want to tell them where the, the, where it's all split up. I'll go back up to that first city. So we need a new town of Glidden with the town of Jacobs. So there's probably a, maybe a hundred here in the southern part of Jacobs that goes into that 20. And we can't take that away unless we get it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, so if we, we're up to like Maringo now, right. and then if we go north, uh, so we've got White River here, um, it would be split, the southern portion has 825 people, so that's an 8%, and then the northern part is 14 with jingles, and that is at 826, so another 8% deviation. And how is that similar to the current, Rick, that's yours? Yeah. Is that pretty much all we are now? I'd say Jingles should have two. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> Do they well, have we enough could, or we two? We like twins. <laughs> I know. I'm not running, so. <laughs> Does Jingles have enough or two? Uh, yes. Jingles has, well, Jingles has 785, so they're pretty much one. Okay. They could be one by themselves. Okay. <laughs> But White River is nine something? 950. Yeah. And they could be divided. They're going to need to be divided. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what happens is when you look at the city, when you look at district number one there, you're advocating for people from Jingles and put it into the city district because the city is losing population. Um, we can figure out how to keep 11 districts for the city. I think if this continues, you're going to see 10 districts in the city eventually. And it would be very acceptable to put 10 districts in the city today. Yeah. We are moving gyrations to make that happen, but we're going to keep at 11 right now. But you can see we're taking, you know, we're taking 100 and some odd people from the Jingles and moving them into the city district. Because otherwise, uh, Jingles is too high and the city's too low. We'll just have to keep it the way we got it. I'm okay, sorry. Where, where <laughs> in Jingles are you picking them from? Where's the road or the cutoff? Uh, Claus Road and Dalstrom, and then Beezer Road. So, so that's by Pierce's Sausage Kitchen? So, no. By the airport. Oh, that way, okay. Okay, but <coughs> Beezer Road, how far south? To Dalstrom. Dalstrom Road. That seems That's one north of Hegstrom. Yeah. Okay, so that would go out of Jingles to the city. city. Like it is now. That's not good. Well, it's not good. It is if that person wants to run. <laughs> I'm not running. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> it's Lawyer's District, isn't it? Jingles should have two. What are we doing with 12 and 13? I guess we should talk about that since we're talking about 14 because we had. You combine those numbers, you needed to look at something over there. Yep, so I did a lot of mess around with 12 and 13, and um, right now I kind of have two options for you guys. Um, so we'll just look at the one that's here. So we've got that little piece of District 10, which is half city, half uh, town of Sanborn, 
it's out to Rectal Road, which is the uh, second, landing. second landing, yep, the boat landing. Um, and then District 12 is um, out County Highway A and um, Odana, and then it splits New Odana. Um, and the island. Yes, and it contains the island. And then District 13 would be um, the east side of New Odana and Franks Field and, and Birch Hill, and then south, which really there's no, there's like three people. What, what are the numbers for those that way? Uh, for District 13 there? Yep. 739, so that's a negative 3% for 13. And 12 is? 12 is 921, so a 21%. So we have a we have a different solution that does split them up a little more evenly, also. So with with this, we have to be cognizant of our minority population on the reservation. So with this split, um, there are 429 Native Americans and 427 white people in District 12. So, being that that splits uh, New Odana and encompasses old, and old, old Odana, I was trying to keep that minority population more than the, than the white population. So that, that's what this map is here. And then the next one, I kind of followed our old, our current boundaries a little bit more where it splits down um, Highway 2. So in this one, we've got District 13 being uh, Birch Hill, Franks Field, um, and then the... That's Maple Street right, right by the casino. Yep east part of New Odana. And then District 12 would be north and most of New Odana, north of two and the island. And then we've got the little split again for uh, over by second landing. Are there the numbers there? Yep. So 13 is 848 people, 11%. And that is uh, 50 white and 73, 737 Native Americans. Okay. And then District 12 is 819. So that's a 7%. And we've got 412 um, white people and 346 Native Americans. And this does encompass most of New Odana. So even though we have better percents on this split, we're creating our minority population, we're, we're taking away their vote on this one to some degree. Versus the one right before. Correct. Go, to, go back one now. Yep. Um, and so there we have a plus one and a minus three percent. Why don't you just why don't you just move a couple of those lines in splitting New Odana? I mean, if you zoom in that, that difference right there, just take another take another ward or two, or the ward so large it's going to totally mess it up. I couldn't find a, a a nice road split that kept that minority population greater than the white population. Okay. So that is Yeah, I see I see that next word there is one fifty one. And if you grab that one, um, then that's gonna push no, if you grab go the other direction. Sorry, we gotta go from we gotta go from twelve to thirteen. Sorry, I was thinking wrong. Yes. Right. So as we pull into that, we take yeah. away the Native American population significantly. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. So if you do that, you're gonna change. you gonna change that popular yeah. right. There's not an easy solution here. No, this has never been easy. What about the island? Where does that come in? The island would be a part of the blue here, okay. District Thirteen. All right. 
And we're talking 272 people then. Right. Yeah, and, and it doesn't make any sense to take the island and split that into, no. into a part of the city and part of the, the reservation. That doesn't make any sense. No. So really that kind of stays basically the same as we have it now then? The island? Yeah. They're going to have to come join some of the mainland population. But don't we have that already? We do. Yeah, so it's kind of basically the same. It, I call it Joe Rose's section. <laughs> Used to be Joe Rose's Yeah. Guy, I can tell you. <laughs> He's a good guy. Go on. So I guess I would lean towards making sure we keep that minority population greater. In this one, it's, it's splitting hairs. We're at 427 white people and 429 Native Americans, so it's, but with the um, inclusion of the um, Pacific Islander, the Asian, the Hispanic, we do jump over um, the white population in that one. And the reason you're taking part of the uh, District 10, which is the city district, and moving it into Sanborn is because Otherwise, District 12 becomes way over even 12 percent. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have a choice there. You got, you got to remove some population from that district. So, so I have a question. If we can go from here backwards, mm -hmm. does anybody have any problem with that? Uh, the island, the reservation, Sandburn, that particular map. Mike, you you represent some of that area. Do, do you? I'm, I'm not representing 13 minutes. Uh, after looking at this, and, and that's why I just blurted it out. Uh, when you come down on um, Highway 2, down to the casino, which is Maple, and that's where that line is right there. So I, I looked at this in uh, Joshua Park about this, and, and I recognize where this road is at and where that you know line is. So uh, I, I don't have a yeah, I guess my, my only concern would be the 20%. You know, they, their, their recommendation from the state is you shouldn't be over a 10% deviation, plus or minus. This district is 20% over twice the level. And the question that you have to you have to ask yourself is, if you're challenged, and basically this is not, you know, a citizen could come to you and say, this is disrepresentative uh, voting because you're basically doubling your doubling your deviation on one district. A citizen could challenge you on that. You could defend yourself by basically falling back on the, one of the other principles, which is maintaining a minority majority district. So that's your fallback position if you're challenged on it. So that's the only thing I want you to be aware of. I did call WCA and um, actually called a legislative technical bureau and talked to their redistricting lawyer and he said uh, he thought that keeping the minority population whole or greater than the white population is a strong enough reason to have uh, more than a 10% deviation in a district. Okay. Is there any way we can adjust some of those along the line there south of, of two that would you know, kind of change it so that we get better numbers as far as total numbers. As we as we take away from District Twelve, we lose the minority population. And I was clicking around and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Um, I couldn't find white people to take away from 12. Yeah, and, and when, we, when we look at these maps, if she clicks on one of those wards, it'll actually give you the percentage of what's in each one of these wards. And you can go down to like, so like 10 people in this area, you'll find out what their demographic is. So that's how she hunts the text to try to maintain a minority majority district. So it's not random. And District 12 was still at 20 percent. Correct. Right. And in order to 
keep different minority we need to do that yeah. and we don't have I mean, if if you didn't put if you basically took away from district 10 you would increase the minority majority percentage but the problem is you're going to be more and more out of whack and you're going to have the cities being too far negative and this one going 25 or 30 percent over so you you're basically stuck pretty much where you're at all of the, the little census blocks i just clicked on have more like this one right here has 12 native americans and six um white people so it, like there's not a a white majority census block that i can just snake out of there okay. um you know so this one is seven white people and five native americans so it's like a it's a balancing act and okay so if um, go ahead mike uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused here only because at this present time in my district is everything south of us highway two with what we're proposing here we're picking up Birchill all the way down to uh, the casino, uh, including the, uh, what do you call it, Frank's Field. Right. So, so there should be more numbers there. And um, as, uh, as the numbers come up on the thing here, it says that we're at a minus 3%. So you're picking up more acreages or, or more, more people, more population, stuff like that. Um, how much? Clark, are you a copy of the, the plan A or the plan 10 districts? Because um, the, the current split mic is very, I think it was 38% uh, deviation. It was not um, a great split. You mean as far as in these numbers or you just want a map? Do the map. Yes. Or the... Um, I don't know, that's a lot of cherry for uh, District 13, but uh, it, it, you know, numbers aren't going to lie because it's a program and that's what it's designed to do, so uh, you know, it, it's hard for me to contest it's other than the fact that um, it, it's almost like uh, Kathy should be right now. She's, she's covering this whole uh, southwestern and all the way down to the bottom, so we're, we're trying to equalize uh, uh, this whole... Uh, that, that's, that's all on the... That's all on the drive here if you want here so redistricting and here's all your information from the last meeting and these meetings um, so I don't know you can see, see what's in the 24 um, yeah so actually you do have the old one there also clicking around while you were speaking. Um, I just wanted to pull this up and show you, this is the uh, current boundaries as it stands today in this software. So District 12 right here with uh, north of two, and then it kind of snips out um, Frank's field there and then by the boat landing. That is at a thousand people. So we're at 32% deviation. Um, and we're supposed to be in a 10% range. Sure. And then District 13 is at 800 people, which is a 5%, which is a, a fine deviation there. So really, we're, I was just trying to correct District 12 here. But I mean, the, the option is that we can go back to that split too. Uh, I'm not opposed to the split, yeah, it's just that. Uh, on the, the proposed here, it's a uh, minus three percent for uh, District 13, <laughs> and uh, uh, plus 20 percent. So, so the 20 percent at this point in time, we're right, right there today, is 30 plus percent. Correct. So we're bringing that 30 percent down to 20 percent, and then we're bringing uh, dis District 13 uh, up to uh, three percent, minus three percent. Correct. 
I gotta say, the, it, it's a program and it, it's what it is, so uh, it, it's hard to suggest the numbers. It's what it is. Okay. Sure, no, I, I'm okay with that. Okay, does anybody on that change, looking at that with the new numbers, does anybody have any other concerns or can we say we'll look down to the south again and then come back to the whole thing as a whole but your your changes as you have them if nobody has any other concerns we'll move back down to the other districts and say okay let's see if we can come to a consensus that that is we're not really changing much here as I can see other than the line. Right. I mean, the line is going to, to New Odena rather than all the way out to. So, you know, I don't. I think we would have a, we would have to fill a new seat for District 13. I don't know where, Mike, I don't know where you live and I don't know where Dylan lives, but. That shouldn't matter actually, but. Right. So would we have 22 districts then? What about, have you talked to the city, are they aware of basically taking township land and incorporating a District 1 and District 10? I have talked to Denise, the city clerk, um, but I did not indulge that the city district would be encompassing town land. I think no, that's it, more it, of a town, I think that's more going to upset the town than it is the city. Correct. Have you ever done that before, or is that brand new for you? I don't believe that's ever been done before. See, that's a good point that you bring up, knowing where Mike and Dylan live. Mike still lives in District 13. Dylan would now live in District 13, as it's a uh, map. He's a reflex. So he's on the north side of, of our university, um, just below the hill. So in, in that case, uh, you would not be able to, we, we'd be looking for a new person for District 12. Correct. I don't know how you feel about that. But isn't, isn't part of our process here to be, and the words that are being used in the media is fair. We're not supposed to be considering our political boundaries, but rather our sense of boundaries and what makes sense. I mean, if you look at it, we start looking at who's living where, and we start drawing our lines that way. I mean, it's regardless of which way it's going to go, that's gerrymandering. And I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> yeah. no, no offense, but that's exactly what happened 10 years ago. Yes. They, yes, drew, line, they right. drew lines right around someone's house. Right. <laughs> they, I mean, did. they did. They did. I and know. it happened dozens of times. Yes. The Republicans went into cities and drew the line right around somebody's house and they became out of their district. Yep, that's uh, true. But it uh, isn't nothing new, Mike. It's nothing new, but it's we not don't want to participate. It. I see it under my watch anyhow. I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. Okay, so if if your first shot at that works works, then if we go back down did when we went to like uh, Ringo in a U shape? Does anybody here or online have a concern about making that um, Morris? It's Morris and Ringo the, the right. U shape. Okay. Brittany, I just have just to clarify. So Town of White River would not be included in the Town of Ringo anymore. Correct. Like we talked about last week, it would just be Morris and Ringo. Correct. Okay, so no, no so, concern. So, yeah, so I, my, I guess my question is, this seems to be square. Why, why are you going to make an effort to go around, around Mellon and move Marengo into Morris when you already have something that seems to work here? Because we need the numbers. Well, but it works right now. No, Marengo doesn't have enough to make a district. Well, it does because you're including the you're including that chunk of Ashland. The town of Ashland. And right now, District 16. The new at, 16. Di District 16 is at 771. It's with plus, Ashland. It's up plus 1%, the way it is. 
I mean, I get your point. You don't you want you want to protect ash when they have its own separate, so it doesn't have to happen. But what you're doing is you're basically taking your district and protecting it, and now you're taking Morris and saying, well, now you have to do what you don't want Ashland to do. The okay. Northern Angle is, is presently his district 18. No, I mean, in, in, in this map here, 16. In the map, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know what presently, currently, town, the town of uh, Marengo is, is such a uh, district 18 that comes around to the top of Morris, and right up around the same figure you're talking about. All we're doing is adding the west side of the town of Marengo to that. Okay, so the map up on the screen shows that blue is one district now? Correct. And so it's taking the east side of Marengo and going all the way up to the next line there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's a horseshoe there now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what I'm saying is, you know, I mean, <coughs> what I'm saying is just make it more square. To me, the horseshoe seems to be you're going out of your way to basically make no changes. So if you go back to the other map, um, you know, this is, this seems pretty square to me. You got Marengo and a little part of Ash, and would be 16, and then you have basically Morris, except for Mellon, to be, what's that, that's 18? Correct. Yeah. Where's the label for 18? Uh, floating right above the map. Right above the map. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, this, to me, this looks more natural than in U shape. So there is uh, something that says keeping communities together. And so in this one, I guess I could see Mari's point of splitting the high bridge area, as this is right. Uh, this is County Highway C here. So you're talking about high bridge. Before you were talking about Marengo. Town of Marengo. Town of Marengo. Okay. Okay, and, and you're saying, go ahead, Marty. You're saying to do the U? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, just, just the way they are now, and have that west side of the town of Rainbow to District 18, make that all the way around just the what you want. But you wouldn't say the word. You don't want to be, but you, you can't do that because there wouldn't be enough people in but District 16. If they could say the new 18, that would be helpful. If you, but took, I know side, if you took the east side of Rainbow, and put it into 18, there wouldn't be enough people in Marengo. This does look pretty simple. Mm. What's that? The way it is right up here. Well, it, and it keeps Marengo, the town of Marengo, together. But what it does is it splits the town of Ashland in half. And that's, that's the issue that the town supervisors were explaining to me. They said to me, mm -hmm. <coughs> what advantage is this to the town of None other than adding the burden of splitting the, the getting. I don't know Heather could do better than I could, but there's got to be a, a process to get all this stuff initially started up, and then and then to do it for ten years on the elections where the town of Morris is already set up. They have their boards. They're drawn that way. Town of Morris is already split in three wards. So they're so the they're already is very familiar with that process, whereas the town of Ashland is not. We have one more, one ballot, one supervisor district, one school district. Why do we three each one? I know it's I guess I don't, know, I don't understand I don't understand what district sixteen would look like then. District sixteen would be all the right go and then the southern part of Morris and then up one sixty nine. Right. So that would be sixteen. And then Ashland would be based, just the taller Ashland would be 18. I would it know. still need to go up to 169 to cover that block? It would, okay. Yep, we would still need more population. And I, I, I don't understand how the town, how 16 and 18 got switched from all here. Right now, 16 is the town of Ashland at the top corner of, of Morrison. Somehow or other, that got over to the town of Marengo, and 18 got into the town of Ashland. Yeah, I started from the bottom on this map, and they just kind of have been 
important. We're going in and packing and, and everything around, so numbers might change again. Yeah, uh, once we're happy, the, number, the, the numbers can be, can be different, you know, because um, we the, the old, one of the overriding principles that this committee gave Brittany at first was to fix district number 20 because everybody thought district number 20 was just kind of screwy. So in order to do, instead of that north-south orientation, we went to east-west orientation. So the numbers will change. And that's not important, really. But the numbers are relevant for us. That does make for confusion when we're trying to talk here about yeah. goals and systems. We'll make new business cards. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, for, for, my, for my two cents, if we, if we put the town rail and the town horse, except for the corner of from 169 in the city, now on the blowout, it has a separate district I don't think that's that would be my preference for that. So city of Mellon is a standalone now? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're minus, uh, to make that its own thing, that's minus 8%. So it's within your 10% deviation. Is there a way that we could do leave Marengo together and somewhere or another keep Ashland, Town and Ashland together as well? Sure. That's, with, that's exactly what we're doing. Right. So Town and Marengo would be one district encompassing the southern portion of Morse. And then the Town of Ashland would be one district encompassing the northern, uh, northern west portion of Morse. I think the people in the town of Marengo would like having their town back together as one again. Who wants to divide your town? Nobody. Nobody gonna is have, not. Going to have to have more <laughs> children. <laughs> it's increasing. <laughs> it's in <laughs> so I have it in my notes to try the that split, and I, I do think it should work with the population count. Yeah. And we're going to meet, as you saw the schedule we handed out, we're going to meet again next Tuesday at 9 o'clock to go through this. So Brittany will run that map, and, and then you'll be able to evaluate it. And the, the schedule will be, you guys are going to have to recommend a map to the county board next week. So, so we need to we just change that boundary right now so we can see what it looks like. I don't really want to <laughs> play no. words in front of you guys. Right. I mean, we're under the timeline here, and it would make more sense if we could visually see what you're talking about, and number-wise, before we bust camp and then, you know, I mean, we, we start. We, we can click, I mean, I've, I've done this, this is not. I wouldn't do it, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can do it, I'll do it. I think that's your, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I it's think so we should. logical. I think we should. It's a matter of how the numbers really then line up. Go ahead. Can you get it back then? I think we should move on to, to 15 and 14 though, because I think, I do think it's going to work. I agree with Brittany. Because we haven't really discussed 15. I haven't heard a nay or yay on that, and then I haven't heard about 14. Oh, you'll hear 14. Well, let, well let's look at 15, Town of White River. What's the concern there? It's too big. No. So yeah, the town of River, uh, the town of White River itself has 900 people, so we do have to split it to some degree. So. Is it currently? It's standalone. No. No. It's split. Okay, so if it's split already. But it's. I mean, it's split it's a little. Yeah. Split a little. It different. doesn't look split. It is. So this is the current districts. Oh, I see where you split it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See the orange That's for White River where Elm Down is. That's for White River where the most camp. So we okay. taking that and putting that with Ashland is what you want to no, do? No, that's still White River. But see how much that's in there. It's just like this way instead of this way. You guys can move your chairs. Be closer here if you want. What is that? Um, it is um, Maple Ridge. Okay, I know where that is. And then uh, Suiso. Suiso. Yep. And then over across 13 to Charles Johnson. 
Oh yeah. And your proposal there, we're population wise, we're okay. No. Yes. Right now, these are on the high side, but they're okay. Okay. How many would be in White River this way? The southern portion has um, an eight percent, so eight hundred and twenty-five people. And the um, northern part with jingles, uh, my table just got messed up, so I'm gonna refresh. The northern part has 826 people, which is another 8%. So we're still within the 10. So it lowers, it lowers the line then a little bit for the town of Jingles as it currently is, the, that District 14. Correct. All right. And then moving some of that into District 1. So the issue here is the city lost population. So yeah. they need numbers. From White River. From Jingles. From Jingles, from Jingles because yeah. they touch Jingles. And then Jingles yeah. needs numbers because they lost it to the city. No. So it's a no, ripple effect. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. The, the, the city wants to take over Jingles in a certain way and it just, no, it won't work that way. But yeah. the, this is, that isn't this issue. It is. No, it isn't. No, it no, is. No, because no. Okay. the city business is city business. This is county business. I know. So whether some people in Jingles wind up in a district represented by Ashland. But but the, the people in Ashland want to take over the town of Jingles. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yes. I know, but that that's two different issues. Yes, it's not the same. <laughs> it is. And I say leave Jingles alone, uh, in fact, give us two, and uh, deduct from the town of Ashland, or city of Ashland. So it is an option to take away District 1's portion here that is in Jingles, but then the city would be under, so. What board, what districts in the city have changed? One in 11 or 10? Have the others changed? I changed um, district one and two. Two was significantly less. Uh, two was at, two was at a negative 16. So I added some of district one to that, which then made district one short. So then I came down and it's, Jingles. You can't. No. <laughs> um, I did not. I have not touched. Okay. And then aside from the one that goes up to the district ten. Okay. Yeah. When I, I I played with this for a couple hours and I changed most of the city districts trying to get it to balance out, <clears throat> and I ended up with even more township land into the city to try to make it balanced because that's what you're going to have to do, or you're going to have to go to the city and say you only get ten districts. That big of a change today would be very difficult given the timeline you have. I would basically recommend you stick with 11 in the city, move township land into there to make a balance, and then go to 10 districts in 10 county districts. The city can do what they want. The city can have seven districts, they can have nine, they can have 13. The city can have as many districts as they want. You are the county. You get to decide where, you know, how, where your districts are. And, and all we're doing is trying to get it as close to possible that the full county board can vote this in. You have to realize too, the full county board has a lot of city councilors on it. 11. And they're gonna be voting on this too. So, you know, we could sit here and argue for a week. That's what I'm saying. You can't do that. Well, but, the next part of this process is we send this to the city and they get a chance to make a recommendation back to us. Right. So it's not that we don't get to hear from the city right. as far as what their council wants to do. We're gonna, that's the next part of this process. I mean, there's all sorts of places this could go. I mean, we start, because then you can start looking at, at 12 and 13 and people will start questioning, well, why, those numbers are higher. Let's start taking some people from there. So it's a matter of, of whose ox is getting gored here is what we're really talking about. Yeah, so if, if you look at the big picture here, 
So you're basically at the 31st, you're gonna review this one more time on the 7th, and then you're gonna basically put it in front of the county board for approval on the 16th. On the 17th, you're gonna send it out to municipalities. What, what you approve, you're gonna send out to municipalities. Municipalities are gonna give it back to you on the 18th, and now we're scheduling a redistricting committee on the 26th to take the township considerations into this map if you need to, if you want to change it again. But really, unless you're gonna meet consecutive days, you really only have one meeting because then you have to basically notice, 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 notice to get November 9th, you have to approve it. So you know your deadline, you have to do this. It doesn't matter if you like it or you don't like it, you're still gonna do it. We don't like it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you don't have a choice in the matter. I, I think we do. You, well, so I tried to, um, I talked with the, the city of Ashland clerk, Denise, okay. and she did attend the first meeting we had via Zoom. Um, they have an ad hoc redistricting committee that has not met yet. So Denise was going to recommend that we, that the city just stays with 11 and goes with what the county has but there are people at the city that want to make the district smaller. So in the four weeks that they have to work the plan, their, their work time, they could come back to us with only nine districts. I mean, the, we'll just have to wait and see what they settle on and take it from there. So I didn't want to spend too much time in the city of Ashland because I foresee them changing things. I hear what Rick is saying, and the city needs people and they need residents to make their district. So what are they going to do? They're going to come down to Jingles and take half of them and put them in the city. Can't. We this, won't let them. No, that's we're, we're, we're spinning in a circle here that we don't need to spin. It has we, nothing to do with the city. This is oh. county board representation. I know. And you know you still have the same number of city councilors right now as you will, you know, on the 17th of October after this until the next election. It has nothing to do with the city council. It has to do with the board and how we're divided up. So, you know, it's, I understand that I really do. But like I say, put the city involved with jingles, not good, not good. Uh, so my two cents on this, I don't love this. This does not fit the 300 minimum ward. Um, I just, I'm not sure how to do it better without taking a district away from the city. So, so that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Yeah. So I think at this point it might be best to just. Honestly, if you start looking at wanting to take a district from the city, you're gonna get arguments that no, we ought to take the numbers from 12 and 13 because they're over as it is. So, I mean, that's where you really push this thing by saying, hey, we don't want to uh, adjust our boundaries anywhere else. So and that's going to create an issue. It always and does. Rightfully so. It always does. But you're already, in this, in this proposal, you're already taking Sanborn land and moving it into the city, and you're taking it from this side of jingles and move it into the city. It has to come from somewhere. It has to come from a township. You don't have a choice. No. Or you guys just deal on yourself completely and we we do nine dis 10 districts in the city. And you just have a whole new alignment within the city, which is going to be very difficult to do from a staff perspective before the next meeting. But I if we do a brand new county district and out of the city of Ashton district, it's going to cut jingles anyways because I foresee it a horseshoe around the city of Ashton because that's where our population numbers are. It's going to affect 14, it's going to affect 15, and it's going to affect 12 around the city of Ashland. And, and, it's gonna and here's, here's my issue. We're county board members for the county. I'm not protecting my territory and nobody else should protect their territory. That's not what this is about. But we the are. Whole, but the, I, it's wrong. I'm sorry, it's wrong. No. You, you can't protect your own position. If it's the county board decided to take my township and shift it over somewhere else and I was out of a district, hey, 
I have a choice to move. Yeah, well, <laughs> but like we can't protect ourselves. I we got to do what's sure. best for the county. And then if moving a couple of parcels into another district, so be it. it well, the city of Ashland definitely wants to take over the town of Jingles. I know they do. I, I hear you. But in putting the people of the city in the town of Jingles is not good. It's just not. It's not good. So we'll let it go with that. Gary, if you look at town of um, Peaksville, there's 141 people in your town, right? I don't live in Peaksville, but whatever. So which town do you live in? Tell me. Agenda. You're in Agenda. So you got 421. So right there, you have to take people from other towns to make your district. But at least they're in the county. You're asking them to take to go with the city. You're let still the city in the county. county. Yeah, you're a county taxpayer. You're I know. still in the same county. Yeah, I understand. It's not a them against us. We're all supposed to be. Us. Oh, it, we're supposed to be. Yeah, I, I hear Rick <laughs> loud and clear. I know. Every Marty's doing the same thing with Ashland. You're doing the same with your district. No, 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 no I'm not. No, I have always represented a ward in Peaksville, town of Virginia, village of Butternut, except for that little chunk, uh, little piece on the other side. All I'm trying to do is make the clerk's job easier. There's a big difference between making a clerk's job easier and and trying to protect one's position. If if my district got changed to where my house was in some other district, uh, so be it. It, it, it doesn't matter. I, I didn't run for glory here. I <laughs> do run for you people. Didn't? <laughs> no, I've got 53 years of elected office. I know. And, and I dare say that I got as much as anybody in this room. Yeah. And so, and there's multiple years where I didn't collect any money, so I'm not doing it for the money either. So no. I, uh, I'm trying to do what's best for the county, and if it means realigning some of this to get our population within goal, I'm all for it. I don't care where the lines fall. I agree with Gary 100%, and you know, I've seen nothing less than what he's talking about right now that he's doing. And I'll speak on my own behalf. The first time I was on the city council, I was in a different ward, and realignment put me in another ward. So I know how that goes. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. That's the way it is. And the, the, this needs to be done in a, a manner that's fair. And the, the fairness needs to be to the town clerks and stuff too, as far as for the election ballots. We shouldn't be you know, dividing things up and increasing the cost of the taxpayers because now you gotta pay more for ballots because there's more issues on, on you know, ballots that need to be. So if we can square these things up and get as close to equal numbers as we can in each district, that should be our only goal. It shouldn't matter, you know, as far as where my house lies. Gary, Heather and Laura have... I was going to say Laura's never had Okay, a sorry, Laura, go ahead. I'm just wondering in the big scheme of the plan, if I still stay in District 1, what my big evil plan is for the... Come to Jingles. I mean, I hope for the people, you know, for the people who call me and talk to me inside of there. Isn't that what we're all doing? It's just if if we do run and we are in the same districts or not, aren't we just voting for the people that are in it? I I, I don't I don't get this city versus versus township kind of thing. I, I just if it's simple for as simple as we can do with the population that we have isn't that the best case scenario i mean i i don't care how many districts the city has for their stuff we're, we're just doing county stuff here this isn't about holding the seat and you know it just if if it is that district and it does have Tony Jingles in it, and I am elected again, I would just attend our meetings. I mean, it just makes a little more work for somebody that's in the city, if, if you know, it's city folk versus country folk here. I just kind of thought we were all on T National County here, because that's where we got elected. Okay, Lord, thanks. 
So, Laura, here's, here's a, maybe you can help clarify this if I'm saying it wrong, but here's the difference because you represent the city and the county. When it came time to raise the $8 fee for septic tanks, did you vote for it or against it? I because it worked, because that's what the people contacted me about. And yeah. see, the city people shouldn't have even been voting Point for order. that. Yeah, that really has nothing to do with redistricting. It sure does. No, it, it doesn't. No. This, is, this does not need to become a personal issue. Yeah, let's, let's go back to that um, jingles, just so we can get some clarification. Um, because the next meeting we're gonna vote on something to pass to the full county board, so we kind of need to know where where we're gonna give it. Right. So this is the, the complex part because Jingles itself has seven hundred and eighty five people. It could be one single district. However, the city needs needs numbers. So they have like maybe a hundred and twenty five people right there. And because the town of White River has so many people, okay. uh, Jingles comes down into the town of White River. So. Oh, whatever, I, I, all I'm saying is this time I'm gonna vote no one. It's not good. And that, that's fine because the whole county board will get to vote on the final determination in a and that's good. couple of weeks. But, um, are we okay with that jingles thing? Not okay, but okay with letting <laughs> her know to leave that line where it is right now drawn? No. I will, I'll come back and see what I can do with it. Good. I'll, I'll play around with it and see okay. what I can come up. Thank and you. like I said, with the city having the four weeks to do what they want to do with this, uh, this, I mean, who knows? Maybe what they'll fix it for us. That. Right. There you go. Can, can we can we start letting the townships and the city know these are kind of what we're looking at and playing with? I mean, let's give them a little more time. I mean, we all know right now what it's like to right. try to crunch numbers and be under the gun. And, and yeah, we don't have to give it to them for a little while, but why not give it to them now and say, here's what we're looking at. Are we not seeing something that we should see? And, and let them start weighing in on it. So I have provided um, meeting links to the clerks, and I think Heather might have as well, at least to the city, um, and it's on the website. So yeah, we have this on the website, on the homepage, um, and we're putting up plans, so after today's meeting, we will put where we're at today, and then we'll work on it more, you'll see the plan, hopefully, you know, we'll have a few days to take this incorporated information and feedback from you will incorporate it to another plan so we'll just keep working on it okay sounds good okay so we'll we'll go with that for now in our tentative plans and then if we drop down we're okay with um yeah i'm going to change the, the middle town here town of morris ashland um and rango around okay. um and there was something, oh, I was going to look at changing Peaksville to District 20 and putting Butternut as only one ward, so it will become District 21. Okay. Brittany, will you be publishing that? Yes, I can probably, let's see, today's Tuesday, so maybe by Friday I can put up a new a map of the the issues there and then jingles I'll probably keep playing with until the next meeting because that's going to yeah. take some time. And then just, just a quick question, mm -hmm. if uh, Chippewa as a whole and Chana Golden go into that district, they would elect a new representative for their district. So um, right now as it sits, John Wiener is in 20. Because Blemel is the cutoff, and he's oh, south okay. of Blemel. Oh, okay. So he would get just technically trip on Shannon Golden and Peaksville. Peaksville. Okay. And which one would you get then? 
Uh, I'm going to move to Iron County. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. Yeah, so if you incorporate those things, then when we meet again in a week or whenever that was. Yeah, a week, next okay. Tuesday. Okay. So Marengo now will be split instead of north and south. They're going to they're going to run east and west, correct? And, correct. And you're going to play around. I, I'm going to make sure I understand. You're going to play around maybe with that boundary to help the the northern half of Jingles. Is that what you're thinking? I'm going to look at White River and Jingles and see what I can come up with there. Okay. We have a lot of population in that White River Jingles area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm just not. But we don't have enough to make another, a third district, yep. so. Okay, makes sense. And, and, and we haven't heard back, I mean, Rick just happens to be here from the town of Jingles. You haven't heard from the town of Sanborn to say, how do they feel about this? Maybe you get your way and you have to take more from Sanborn and another district. But that's why I'm here. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, yeah. He who shows up gets, gets the reward. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. That's right. Okay, so anybody have any other questions on that proposal for next meeting? I, I guess from a, um, are we looking at only having one proposal up at a time on our website, or are we going to be dating these, like proposal one, proposal two, or we're just going to, whatever we update, or that would be the one on the website, so we don't, we're not giving the, I think just one. Just yeah. one, okay, so we're not giving the clerk saying, here's options one through six. Right. Okay. That's, that's just my suggestion is we just put up the one I agree map, Matt and we just talked about the one that should be put up now right is yep. with the changes as they are and I I get that Rick doesn't like those changes as they are but that's the one that should be put up there initially and then we right. can modify that the next time we meet correct right? are you still on the city council no okay is anybody here in the city council okay I mean I'm, I'm just wondering because I know they had I talked to Brant maybe a couple months ago about do they have inkling about going from 11 down to 9 they had talked about I, that. I reached out to some people on the council and then I just left the council the last election okay. and there was a proposal to reduce the size of the city council but no action had been taken on it and I, I did the same thing I talked to Denise here the other day um, yesterday actually and you know they're they're proceeding forward with their current makeup the way it is. Um, so we'll see what they do from that point. Maybe they'll redes redesign their district in the city and then we'll all be happy. Okay. Exactly. And then the next <laughs> meeting is next Tuesday at 9. That's correct. Okay. Any, any other questions? And Mike, you can have some input on that boundary out there. I mean, what I, what I want to do is talk to him a little bit. So I'll bring it to Tom Chamber and uh, get him an opportunity to weigh in on whether they want to go to the meeting or the real like next Tuesday. So I, I would want to do that next week. Right. Okay. I forgot to record this meeting. Oh, that's all right. I did. Denise is looking for the recording of it. I, there, I recorded I, it. You recorded this one we're doing right now? Is there a motion to adjourn it? Wait, he's talking. Wait. So just the audio. recording of the yeah. meeting then? Or? Well, it'll just be the minutes. I, mean, you know, I, I, I totally, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally <laughs> forgot to hit the record button. I mean, you, that, that is actually one wonderful thing. <laughs> you got, no, you guys have come to expect a recording of meetings. Right. I mean, which is a wonderful, which is a wonderful change. Well, if as long as it's not being recorded, you know, with that kind of a uh, <laughs> situation, then I don't think you're going to be long for this job. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got seven of you right here. You will not be retired. I still move. So, is your motion to adjourn? I'll so move. Second. Wait. Sorry, Ron. That's quite all right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.